Welcome again to API Days Helsinki and we have the final presentation of the kind of IoT and, and devices and platforms uh, track here. But before I let Merja loose on the subject of 5G, then what is your life hack you want to share with all the others during these weird remote times? Music is the lifesaver especially when using the ready-made lists for music, they are very good. Especially when you are focusing on, on work and between remote meetings, they are so do you very want to conf uh, Do you want to confess what kind of music? Um, jazz music, piano jazz, <laughs> classical. Yeah, well, I mean... Classical is pretty good for concentration, but when I'm really like needing an energy boost, I confess to listening to Jennifer Lopez tracks. I, I know it's embarrassing, but probably you have better music taste with jazz. But hey, let's go ahead with this 5G and APIs and what in the world do they have in common? Take it away. Indeed, I will talk about 5G, its computing and APIs. 5G is a new technology which will improve the current 4G capabilities and it will provide ways to in invent totally new ways to use, use the operator networks. I will now talk about safe cruising pilot which is ongoing and let's see where it drives us because I'm going to talk about self-driving cars too and also what does this mean for API point of view what kind of requirements will this new environment need uh, 5G and edge computing are indeed a very new ways for the computing and it will change and include new components. Uh, we already have almost everything on the cloud, but now there will be with the edge computing, you will have cloud type of services much, much closer to the actual usage. So if we think about IoT with um, cameras, different types of industry, IoT, they produce lots of data, they need very small latencies, and that's also where the 5G comes in the picture. Uh, the data uploaded to the, to the back office is moving through the 5G, and it can first hit local edge servers. They are located very close to the cell towers. And, and there are also regional edges, which are kind of intermediate location between the local edges and the cloud. And how does this affect the APIs? When you have a IoT type of service, the latency is very important. If you normally would send your API requests through normal cloud here, that typically takes half second, hundreds of milliseconds, but for IoT applications, the demand is much, much smaller. And that's why the edge comes to the, to the picture. And this is now very interesting when considering cars which are operating on the traffic. And this is what I'm now going to talk about in this talk. Traffic vision recorded from the cars going through the 5G and the edge computing platforms. Um, with this kind of setup, the location is very important. And with current 4G networks, you will get an accuracy of five to 15 meters. Uh, this varies 
based on what kind of phone you have on hand, what kind of Wi-Fi you have, and and what kind of GPS availability as is available. There is also this year, at the end of this year, um, better accuracy through GNSS Galileo satellites. They operate in European Union and they will in increase the accuracy for normal mobile phones. But what 5G is bringing to the table, it will increase the, the accuracy down to 15 centimeters. This is something what what is being developed and defined at the moment. This kind of accuracy is available at the end of next year. And what else is coming with the 5G is the improved network latency. And this is actually pretty interesting because with less than five milliseconds, you can really build very fast services, including APIs. And one new capability with the 5G is also the increased speed for, for data uploads, data downloads. And with these capabilities provided by 5G, it's computing. This one brings new use cases. For example, with vehicles, uh, you can really start communicating between the vehicles and also with the traffic infrastructure. For example, with the traffic light control systems provided they are capable to communicate through APIs, it will be possible for vehicle to, to receive very fast messages, for example, about upcoming red lights, which means that the traffic needs to stop. So these kind of things will become possible when we combine the 5G its computing and the infrastructure communication. Uh, we are now currently piloting with Forum Virium Helsinki, Telia and Lempea Edge company to build a automatic traffic light detection. And this one is now combining these things with 5G, it's computing, using also automatic uh, machine learning algorithms with computer vision APIs to automatically detect objects, including traffic lights from the images. Here is the scenario we are now experimenting with. Uh, when a car is driving on the traffic, uh, images are recorded and they are being sent through 5G to its, the closest its computer, where an API exists and runs computer vision algorithms and returns immediately back the, the response. Uh, whether there was any traffic lights, whether there were red lights or green lights ahead of the car. This is the upstream from Edge. It will be possible to produce the results also to, to other traffic, uh, other cars in the same fleet and also to map providers, other stakeholders who are interested in this data. And downstream back to the vehicle, it is possible to use this very fast data with the assisted driving. And the car can act or the driver can act based on this information. Sometimes even if you are driving on the traffic, you may not immediately notice the, the upcoming traffic light. So car can 
inform you if either by voice or by by sound that please wake up. You need to stop. Uh, of course, the car all already have map maps, but it's good to have multiple ways for safety reasons to have redundancy. How to identify these different kind of obstacles on the car's front. Here is an example from the pilot where we have an image. Image has been taken from the traffic and it has been run through the API to detect the objects. And here indeed there are two, two traffic lights. One for normal car, the other one for for tram traffic. And based on the image, one can identify automatically the location. And based on where this image was really taken, the image was accurate enough. So this is some, how the automatic traffic light detection works. And how does this affect the APIs when you have this kind of scenario with assisted driving? Let's look at some of the impacts for APIs. Uh, one need to consider the human reaction time. When you are driving on the traffic, there can be sudden events. For example, a metal car, there can be people cycling, running in front of the car. There can be stop signs, traffic lights, changing the, the status. And that's when you need to react quickly. The human reaction time is very kind of short, so you can't have very long latencies. So if we think about them, if we break down the time, the total time needs to be less than 150 milliseconds. And when we are driving in the traffic, the car is taking images, let's say about 20 milliseconds to collect the image, 20 milliseconds to upload the image. This is now provided with the 5G with very small latency and fast upload times. And the image recognition API needs to sit on its computing server. Let's take 100 milliseconds for computer vision API to, to allow the time and the response back in 10 milliseconds. So this will be still less than the expected time. It allows to kind of give time for a driver or the car automatically to stop the, stop the driving. So this is something now which really affects the API because you need to consider what is the response time? Where do you place the API implementation? Is it enough to be on the cloud? Or do you have your edge computing server? Do you need to have it on the local edge, on the regional edge? So those are things you need to consider because this will change the way how you normally think about the API implementation with normal browser-based user interface. This one is something different and it will change your kind of requirements for API from different points of view. So the round trip for API needs to have much, much smaller round trip when considering and comparing to current APIs. Uh, another aspect is also the security. Uh, on this scenario, this is still kind of handled because the API, it's one way one-way traffic, the API, uh, actually the car is not providing the API, car is sending the request, getting the response back. So 
security point of view, this is a safe scenario. So this one was a short introduction to 5G, its computing and what kind of new requirements are going to be placed for API developments. Thank you, Maria. It was a really great presentation and <clears throat> those kind of physical uh, constraints and, and real life risks like yeah, are, are always, hmm, let's say, interesting <laughs> challenge in the API development because a lot of times it, it's not that your API can actually kill anybody, but in this case, even that is a possibility. But how would you say, um, like developing an API or having an API in uh, an edge um, computing environment, and especially a machine learning or like AI related API. So what does that bring into the equation? Are there ready-made APIs or do you have to just code everything yourself or? Um, there are, for the computer vision, you can use APIs which are provided by the large cloud providers, mm. AWS, Google, Azure, but those are sitting on the cloud. Yeah, if exactly. If you think about the res response time, their times would be over one second, two seconds, when you are running the prediction. So this basically means that you would have to run really the the prediction parts on the edge computing. And that way you can achieve the 100 millisecond or less. Mm -hmm. And there are also different types of algorithms. So you can have less accurate algorithms, which are really fast or kind of more accurate, which take a bit longer time to run. So that's also something to consider. And do you have like open source uh, algorithms that you can just, you know, take and put into your edge environment, or is that something that you need to invest a lot of time to develop? Uh, you can actually pick, there are many, many good deep learning algorithms, which you can use and put to the edge cloud. But the question comes always that, especially with computer vision, that do they have the right training data? Yeah. For example, here we have detected that the traffic lights are identified very well, but if you want to get more detailed identification, for example, uh, the cyclists traffic light, and you want to identify it specifically, you need to train it yourself. Yeah. And there is a huge difference in the kind of face recognition versus other kinds of uh, visual recognition. and. I, I've exactly bumped into this case in, in a few occasions where you have this like really nice and good and easily <laughs> available cloud things that you, you have for a specific reason, but even there you have huge differences, how they detect certain things. And even in face recognition, how well they detect kind of uh, certain age, color or <laughs> other <laughs> other things like for example people with glasses which I usually have and you have now so those would be uh, very hard for some algorithms to detect so I can imagine when you start looking at different traffic lights in different uh, positions and sizes and everything so that must be a very tough job and especially yes. if you have to train it yourself so yes and especially things like if you take photos with uh, not during when the sun is setting down, mm. even if we can see from the photo, yes, this is a traffic light, uh, the algorithm doesn't identify it. So it's quite of interesting. On the other hand, yeah. the algorithms identify things which we don't always immediately see, mm. like cars very far away, which we don't immediately recognize. So you get kind of surprising identification and then some common things are not identified. Yeah, that is the challenge, but hey, exactly. uh, very, very well, it, it's good to have challenges and it is a very interesting case you are having here. So very nice of you to come and share it with us and thank you. See you, well, we can see each other real life probably quite soon in, in Helsinki, but 
Um, let's see when we can see. In June, at least, in the API days. Yes. <laughs> and September. Oh. September. Let's not forget September. Okay. Thank you. And this is the final presentation of the IoT and API track. So I hope that you'll look at the previous ones too.